today's topic. Uh, first of all, our, our presenter today is uh, the wonderful and um, highly innovative and successful Dr. Harriet Lewis. And uh, uh, her topic today is um, From Agency to Action, the story of Asiya Bent Muzahim. And so this is the fourth and final installment of our Women's History Month. And uh, just a little um, pause here. I do want to uh, also include that our sister masjid, uh, the Baja Center will also uh, is also the the, the cold post today, uh, so I just want to make sure that uh, we are saying uh, is sending out greetings to all of the believers at the Baja Center as well. So um, let me just give you a little background, a little bio about uh, our wonderful Dr. Harriet here. Uh, Dr. Harriet Lewis is founder of Conis um, Conis. Conison's Development, uh, which is a consult consultancy that furthers equity and inclusion through training, trade, and tourism development. Following her service as a U.S. Peace Corps volunteer to uh, Guinea and Bissau, she led efforts in organizations that furthered, furthered inclusion for marginalized populations, including refugee, immigrant women, and high-risk youth. Later, as uh, the executive director of the Holly Hill Chamber of Commerce and advisory board member for the Florida Minority Supplier Development Council, she supported DEI efforts for small businesses and continues to work through her consultancy and uh, proprietary online co uh, courses. In addition to uh, Connison's development, Dr. Lewis served as a senior advisor at the Inner City uh, Muslim Action Network, also known as Iman. She is co-chair of the Redefining National Security Working Group for the Deep-Based Organization, Women of Color, Advancing Peace, Security, and Cl Conflict Transformation. Wow. She's a board advisor and special representative to the UN for the Nigeria-based NGO uh, uh, NEEDCIS, an honorary consul for the Cape Verde. In 2004, she was recognized by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts House of Representatives for her leadership on behalf of survivors of, uh, uh, as executive director of the organization Reach Beyond Domestic Violence. Uh, Dr. Lewis holds a master's in public administration from the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and a doctorate in human services from Walden University. So with that introdu introduction, um, in bio, I'd like to bring on Dr. Lewis. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's always my, it's humbling to hear that. It's always humbling to hear people talk about you and, and makes me feel uncomfortable regardless of it. And it's always here, interesting to hear different renditions. And it's always an honor to be here in this space um, with Mashida Takwa and the Bahar Center um, giving Talim. Um, alhamdulillah, it's, it's wonderful. It, it creates a space for me to connect, uh, to worship, and it's, it's always wonderful uh, for me to be invited in this space. So today I'm just going to take a few minutes um, while we're in this space to talk a little bit um, about um, Asiya bin Muzahim. Uh, may Allah be um, pleased with her. Um, for those of you who will be listening post this conversation, you're going to miss out on the wonderful breakout sessions that we're going to have here. So I'm gonna talk for about 15 minutes. As I see people are still coming on, I'm just trying to drag my talking out a little bit longer, my intro, um, but I'm not gonna drag it out too long. So I'm not really a, a person that goes on and I'm really kind of, uh, I kind of get to the point. I'm that type of person. So assalamu alaikum everyone. Thank you for being on. But one of the things that I do want to do because we are in space together and we're actually uh, two masjids together, and, and there may be some other people who got in the, the newsletter and they may not be connected to either one of the masjids. What I would like to do is for the people who are on here, if you don't mind, I know it's going to be, usually we stay on these things and we just show our, our you know, our names um, or our pictures. If we could just take a second to unmute, say your name and, you know, which masjid you're connected to, if you don't mind. 
and I'll just call the, you out by or my or organization that you're affiliated with. And I'm gonna, instead of everybody doing popcorn style, I'll just call you out as I see you. Um, I see Frederick Aldine on my screen. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Alaikum salam. Okay. Um, if you can tell, it, okay. If they're also, if you're there by yourself or with someone, if you have an affiliation, please share that information. If not, that's fine. I'm here with Dr. Amin McLeod Aldine. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Sister Zakia. I sound like um, Masjid Al Taqwa. Thank you. Shirley. Okay, I'm not sure if Shirley is with us. I see Ann, A7343 and 7, I mean 97. Okay, I'm not sure if Ann is going to speak. Um, and also feel free to come in at the end if it's taking a little while for you to, but Ann, you just put your mute on. Ann, were you trying to speak? Okay. Uh, Nedra's iPad. <laughs> I don't know if people hear me. We're asking people to come on for a second um, and just introduce yourselves. Um, Vail's iPhone. Yeah, this is Vail, uh, representing uh, Master Altaqua. Thank you. And Shirley. I don't know how what I'm doing. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear yes. you. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 Baja Center. Shirley Haziz, Baja Center. Yes. Thank you. Um, Aisha Alameen. Assalamualaikum family mm -hmm. from Manchester, I'm mm -hmm. sitting here with my three daughters, Akia, Zahira, and Yamina. Um, Thank you. Um, Hakima. Hakima. Assalamualaikum. I am with uh, Masjid Al Taqwa. I'm sitting here with my daughter, Jenna. Wonderful. Um, Eugene Abdul and Dorothy Rahman. Um, they just sent a, a note in the chat. Um, okay, and, then they hear uh, us. They, they can hear us, but we may not be able to hear them. Okay. okay. And Dorothy's iPhone. And then Tariq Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. Meshul al Taqwa. Alaikum assalam. Okay, so wonderful. Thank you so much for the introductions. Now I'm going to share my screen. So we're going to spend a few minutes talking about um, the story of uh, Asiya bin Muzahim. May Allah be pleased with her. Most of us are very familiar with her story. A very um, famous story, a uh, revered woman in the Quran, as well as in uh, other faith traditions, other Abrahamic faith traditions. We know her as um, the wife of Farun, the wife of Pharaoh, who found, she and her maidservants found um, Moses in the River Nile. And so what do we know about Asiya? We don't know a lot about Asiya, but let's just take a moment to look at some verses that are connected to her, um, as well as to Moses, the encounter that she had with Moses in the River Nile. And we begin with Surah al qasas And we inspire to the mother of Moses, suckle him, but when you fear for him, cast him into the river and do not fear and do not grieve. Indeed, we will return him to you and we will make him one of the messengers. And this begins the story. Most of us are familiar with the story. This was a time when Pharaoh had a dream that one of the children of the, um, the Bani Israel uh, tribe was going to rise up and overthrow him in that particular year. And so even though it's not spoken specifically male or female children in the Quran and other traditions, they say the boys, but nonetheless, all of the children or all of the male children were to be killed that year. And Mo Musa um, was born in that year. And but God spoke to Moses's mother to um, pack him up and send him down the river um, and to feel safe and secure doing that and to trust um, doing that and that his sister would follow along um, uh, to watch over him. 
Second verse from Surat al Qasas. And the wife of Pharaoh said, a comfort of the eye for me and for you. Do not kill him. Perhaps he may benefit us or we may adopt him as a son. And they perceive not. And then finally, and Allah presents an example for those who believed the wife of Pharaoh when she said, my Lord, build for me near you a house in paradise and save me from Pharaoh and his deeds and save me from the wrongdoing people. And this speaks to the latter part of her life in this existence. So we're going to just spend a few minutes talking about key stages in Asiya's adult life. We don't know a lot about her. She is not spoken by name, but we're going to talk a little bit about her within the context of her role, her relationships, and her being released. So what do we know about her? We don't know much about her. Um, we know through Hadith that her name is Asiya, and we refer to her as Asiya um, bent Muzahim. May Allah be fully, uh, pleased with her. We know that she came from a royal family. We know um, most likely she had an arranged marriage with Pharaoh. We know that she didn't have a lot of, uh, she had limited agency or not, uh, when she had agency within what she could have during that time. And in many spaces, not all spaces, in many spaces, women were uh, considered property. Um, we know that she was known for her generosity. And we know that she, again, because she came from wealth, she was living her role. We don't know if she was selected to be the wife of Pharaoh because they had things in similarity or if there was, you know, warring factions or an arrangement with her father. We, we don't know exactly why they were together, but we know that she was the wife of a Pharaoh. And so therefore she had um, a regal life. She didn't have to do anything. She had... Uh, maid servants who worked for her. She did not have to lift a finger for anything. So that was the kind of life that she had at that time. We also know that she and Pharaoh did not have any children as well. And according to Hadith, Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, was one of the best women um, in paradise. Although she was the wife of one of the most powerful, arrogant, and tyrannical rulers of Egypt, she was able to see and accept eventually the truth and the message of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with him. For her, her wealth, her beauty, and her status was not a main uh, point. For her, she realized, you know, later, and we'll talk more about, about that, about um, her faith in the oneness of God. And it's also narrated um, that the messenger of Allah, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, drew four lines in the ground. And he said, do you know what? this is. And we said, Allah and his messenger know best. And the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the best of women of paradise are Khadija bint Kawalid. But I think it's, and it's also the stuff, we're on mute. Oh, is that her? You're not on mute. Um, Khadija bint Kawalid, the wife of the prophet, um, mm -hmm. Fatima bint Muhammad, the daughter of the prophet, Asiya bint Muzahim, the wife of Pharaoh, and Miriam bint Imran, um, the mother of Isa. Anyway. Um. Relationships. So um, Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, had many different relationships that she had to navigate. Um, she was, um, she was uh, the wife of the Pharaoh. So she had, again, she had maid servants. She had this this um, ability in, within the house. She was also the adoptive mother of Moses. Um, that was also found, again, we know the story where they, you know, it says that she was bathing um, at the river and they saw Moses in a box or a crate. And she asked her maid service to go get the box or the crate. They weren't sure what was inside of it. They thought maybe it was jewels. And when they found the box, they opened the box and there was a, a baby. And there was an instant connection to this baby. And um, she wanted to take that child, um, was all alone um, for her own at that time. And so, and again, this is the baby that was placed in the river. Um, did I show the river? The River Nile. Oh, that was the previous picture, I think, or the upcoming picture. But nonetheless, she was placed in the river and, and, um, and then she was, uh, and then they took, 
the child from the river. She, her relationship with Moses's mother, which we'll talk a little bit about, um, Moses' mother, Jochebed, um, because God made it so that Moses would not take food from anyone, and because she was not his natural mother, Asiya was not Moses' natural mother, she could not nurse him. And so, again, Moses' sister followed along and was concerned about Moses' health, her Musa's health. And so she went to the Pharaoh and, was, and expressed her concern and said that she knew several nursemaids that may be able to nurse Musa. And she introduced, and he said, sure, go introduce um, me to someone. And so she brought uh, Musa's mother, her mother, to the Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh allowed for Musa's mother to nurse Musa, unbeknownst to the Pharaoh, as well as to Asiya, that that was his natural mother. Alhamdulillah, God still kept them connected to each other. Mm -hmm. And then also um, her relationship with Pharaoh that she had to navigate. Again, you know, she's someone that we don't know a lot about, but if we know anything about humanity and about people and our own experience, that we go through stages in life. And sometimes navigating relationships can be challenged. And I can only imagine what it's like to, to navigate a relationship with a person that you have no control in the household, that you have no sense of agency for the most part. And this person is tyrannical and he kills and he rapes and, and dismisses you. And so she had to navigate that relationship. Even though she probably had wealth and some level of access, she was still Pharaoh's wife. She was still within that house. So she had to navigate that. And so over time, her personal faith and her relationship with Allah, because that's the other relationship that's most important that we want to talk about. Her relationship with Allah evolved. We don't know anything about her religion or faith tradition or what she believed or didn't believe up until, you know, her relationship with Allah when Moses was in um, her life. But um, when Moses began to express Tawheed, when he began to express the oneness of Allah, she began to believe that as well. We know that she began to believe it, but she had to believe it in secret because her husband was tyrannical. Her husband killed people, you know, because if they professed that anything or anyone other than him, because he was tyrannical to the point where he expressed that he is God yes. and that everyone should worship him. And so if anyone was worshiping or believing anything outside of him, they were executed. So she had to, as she was evolving in her relationship with Allah and began to believe in the oneness of Allah and the uh, and the God that Moses believed in, she had to keep that to herself. Over time, we know as the story is, over time, Moses became an adult and he left and he came back to confront Pharaoh. Um, mm -hmm. And he confronted Pharaoh with Pharaoh's magicians or sorcerers. And she witnessed um, the... Uh, sorcery and how Moses uh, was able to convince the sorcerers in one God as well. And they became believers and they were also um, uh, tortured and, and uh, uh, what should I say? They were um, addressed, tortured, killed, hands chopped off as a result of their belief in uh, the oneness of God as well. We also know her relationship strengthened um, in the story of the hairdresser. So there's a story um, of the hairdresser, one of Pharaoh's daughters, of course, and we know that Asiya um, did not have children with Pharaoh. So this is a, a daughter of another wife or of a concubine. And one of his daughters was at the hairdresser. And as the hairdresser was combing her hair, the comb fell. And as soon as the comb fell, when she reached to get the phone, she said, Bismillah. And the daughter said, um, she said, yeah, she said, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. And the daughter said, my father? And the hairdresser said, no, my Lord, the Lord of your father, Allah. And the daughter said, I'll tell him about that. And she said, you know, that she would. And she went and she told her father and her father summoned for the hairdresser and her children. And as a result of her faith in Allah, the, um, the, the, the Pharaoh ordered her to be killed in a pit, in a flaming pit. And so he had a, a pit built in public arena, in a public area, and he had it filled with copper. 
Some say it was a copper cow. And he had it filled with copper and he ordered all of her children to be thrown in to the pit of fire as the mother was. And the mother had one request of the Pharaoh. The mother asked, I would like for my bones and my children's bones to be gathered together in one cloth and buried. And he says, I will grant you that request. And then something amazing happens, and it happens a couple of times in the Quran, that she had one more child that was to be killed, that was to be thrown into the, into the pit. And she was holding on to this child, and this child, she was a child that she was still nursing. And this baby spoke, and the baby said, oh mother, go ahead, for the punishment of this world is easier to bear than the punishment of the hereafter. And at that moment, she went ahead and jumped into the pit with the baby. And we're not sure again whether Asiya saw this or she heard of it later on, but she was definitely impacted by this, by the courage of the hairdresser. As, it was, as, as, I, as I tell you the story, she was Im impacted by this, by this story. She was impacted by her courage. And so, um, As a result of this, again, Hadith tells us that she decided that she was going to walk up to Pharaoh that night and tell him that she was a believer. And she said uh, through Hadith, oh, Father, I have disbelieved in you. I don't care what you're going to do. I believe in the Lord of Musa and the Lord of Harun, the Lord of all the worlds. And he responded to her, do you know what I'm going to do to you? And she responded that she didn't care. And according to Hadith, Farun was one of the most tyrannical and disbelieving persons on earth. And by Allah, his disbelief did not affect his wife. And when she decided to obey her Lord. So again, this is um, Asiya. She is the wife of Farun. She comes from a wealthy family. She's never done any, you know, lifted anything, done anything, never really been dirty. He drags her. He's getting ready to torture her because of her belief, her belief not in him, but her belief in the oneness of God, her belief in Allah, her belief in, in the one God, um, the controller of the universe. And he decides he's going he's to torture her. He drags her to the desert. He deprives her of water in the hot sun. He strips her and he tortures her. His daughters from other women, they're laughing at her. And it is said that Pharaoh even sought her mother's help. But Asiya refused to reject the God of Moses. And again in the Quran, I see as an example for the believers to stay away from evil and sin despite this full assault that she experienced. And in reading Surah 66, again, verse 11, Allah has set forth an example for those who believe. The wife of Pharaoh, when she said, as she was being tortured and looked up to the sky, she said, my Lord, build for me a home with you in paradise and save me from Pharaoh and his evil doing and save me from the wrongdoers. And again, according to Adith, Firun's wife was tortured in the heat of the sun. When her torturers would take a break and walk away, the angels would shade her with their wings and she would see her home in paradise. And this is what I'm saying when she was released. This is when she fully surrendered to Allah and she was released by the from the torture by her faith. And when she was being tortured, as she was being tortured, her faith continued to rise. And we can relate to this, and we're going to talk more about this. But as she was tortured, her faith began to rise, and she looked up, and she saw the, way, the, the shade, and she knew that God was there with her. And she began to laugh, and she laughed and because she only wanted to be with Allah. And Pharaoh said, you know, he was becoming irritated. Um, according to Hadith. And he said that this woman is not in her right senses. And he ordered his guards to go to a cliff. And he told them to look for the largest rock you can find and tie her up under the cliff. And if she sticks to what she said, throw it on her. If she retracts what she said, she will remain my wife. When they came to her, she looked towards the sky and saw her home in paradise and said to, to God, save me from Pharaoh and his evil. And her soul was taken immediately from her at that moment. And the rock was thrown on her lifeless body after her soul had been taken away. May Allah be pleased with her. May Allah be pleased with us. May we have the courage of Asiya. May we have the faith of Asiya. 
May we have the strength of faith in the face of tyranny. By the token of time, humanity surely is at a loss, except for those who have faith, do good deeds, encourage others to the truth, and encourage others to perseverance and faith. Amen. 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 So this is where we're going to connect. So we're going to talk about, you know, agency in spite of, in spite of tyranny, in spite of the challenges that we may experience, in spite of, um, you know, being in spaces that are not feeding our relationship with God. How do we handle that? And so what I want us to do is to break into groups. I'm going to break everybody into, let's say we have about 20 people on here. I'm going to break everybody into four groups. And we're going to talk about, you know, these three questions. Um, please note the questions. Who did Asiya help? Where did she find her strength? And what did she sacrifice? So we're going to break into groups for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to come back and discuss those three points. And then discuss a broader question. And then wrap up. So I'm going to take us off of the screen right now. Please note those questions. Screenshot it or something. Take a picture. Who did Asiya help? Where did she find her strength? And what did she sacrifice? Okay. Dr. Harry, this is very, very interesting and intriguing. So um, I'd just like to note um, that when you do go into your breakouts, uh, I know oftentimes people are a little shy about talking, um, but you know, you may want to ask someone as part of your group who would like to be the spokesperson if you are feeling shy. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to send people into this wonderful Zoom space. I love going into Zooms because I love the way it feels. <laughs> All right. I'm sending people off. So you should have seen a link. So just click on go to room. I can see who's in rooms and who's not in rooms and which rooms you're in. So if there's at least two people in a room, I think it'd be fine. Right now in room one, there's only Masjid Atakwa. But if Dorothy, Eugene, Shamsud, if you could join that room, at least one of you, and be in connection. And I think everybody, all the other rooms have at least two people. Okay, that's fine. All right, I understand you, Jane. So then um, you'll just listen when everyone comes back. Or you can go to the room and listen and just, you could still chat with people in the room and you can communicate via chat, just like you just communicated here via chat in the breakout room. If anyone's having trouble getting to their breakout rooms, let me know as well. Assalamu alaikum, Samira. I can't hear you. Are you having trouble going to the, I thought I, are you having trouble going into the room? Oh, no, give it to me again. I sound okay. like, well, thanks a lot. Okay, so what do I need to do? 
Um, if you go to the bottom, it says like your room, you're supposed to be in room number one. Okay, let me go back over here. Dealing with a senior citizen here. <laughs> <All good. laughs> Chat, meetings, settings. Okay, I'm supposed to be in meeting number one. Should I hang up and call back in? You can't go to room one? I don't see it here. Let me see if I can if I can send you there. Don't move. Let me see. So well, you're already in room. I'm gonna move you to another room then. Okay. So just stay there. I'm gonna move you to room four. Room three. I'm gonna move you to room three. Okay. So there's nothing else I need to do? Nope, just click on the button that says move to go to the room. Okay, it didn't pop up yet. Okay, it should have. So I'm going to move you back to room one then. Oh, I'm say gonna... join breakout room. I see something that says join breakout room. Yeah, that is the room. You click that. Okay, room three, join. Gotcha. Okay. If anyone else is having trouble uh, going to your room, let me know. We're gonna be in the breakout rooms probably for another six minutes. Okay, now let's take you there now. Um, you were in room two, but I'm gonna put you in, um, I'll put you in room three. So Anne, when you see it come up, go to breakout room, just click on go to the breakout room. If there's anyone else that needs me to resend the breakout room link to you, just let me know.
Uh, so Mary, you're back. I can't hear you, you're on mute. I think I'm gonna give everybody the one minute message. That was pretty cool. We had about half in and half out, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just myself and uh, Sister Dorothy, and she but doesn't okay. Yeah. okay, we're back. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, oh, okay. yeah. My, my, our group wasn't a group. Uh, people didn't come to our group at number four. Huh, it showed that there were three people in there. Mm -mm. Okay. So we'll have an open discussion here. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would be a good idea because these are very interesting questions. So I think it would be very appropriate to kind of have an open discussion. Sometimes people, uh, if they're not accustomed to doing that, have some difficulty, you know. Yeah. So, you know, if people can respond to, they can report out if they had a group or if they can just respond to um, openly popcorn style, who did ASEA help? So this is, uh, I sound like this is Sister Aisha. I, I was in a group with Sister Hakima and Sister Zakia Sadiq. Um, and we had a really, a really nice conversation on this question um, of who did she help? Uh, we, we felt like well, part of our discussion was the impact um, that she will never mm -hmm. see of all the folks that she helped, right? Um, a lot talks about how, you know, the, the, the deeds that we do uh, uh, that continue to bless us after we have, have uh, left this, this, this earth. And uh, she, so she, in turn, she helped inspire folks to, to have courage, right? And so she helped the whole Ummah um, essentially to, you know, and she helped to, to, to push Islam uh, forward for folks that she, we may not never know of, right, that then impacted us. And there's a, so there's a rippling effect. Uh, so who she helped is unlimited, is, is unlimited um, because we, you know, because of what she did. Thank and you. I don't know. That's a mic drop response. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but, but wasn't she looked upon as being the mother of Uma or something? It's like I saw something. Yeah, exactly. Is that I'm true? sorry, you said that she was the mother of Uma. Right, of Uma or something. Of... She's not the, no, that would, um, she would not be the mother of, of Islamic Uma, but she definitely, what uh, Dr. Aisha was saying was that, that she influenced the Uma through her faith mm -hmm. and her courage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have a different response? I just think that that response was very complete. Does anyone else have a different response to that question? Um, I, I'd like to jump in. I do agree. Uh, that was an excellent response from uh, Dr. Aisha. Um, what my thought is, is that symbolically, I think she helped all women. She really, um, I mean, her courage, her faith, um, I, I think that that was able to um, embolden women going forward. Mm -hmm. Any other responses? Okay. I want to go to the next question then. Which is, where did she find her strength? 
Well, Sister Aisha answered that for for our group anyway. Uh, I would like her to answer the questions because uh, everyone, you know, gave their input. But if she could summarize them, Aisha, <laughs> go ahead. You can take this one, Sister Sakia. Oh, uh, okay. What was it uh, about? Um, where does she find her where strength? Does find her, where does she find her strength? Mm -hmm. Well, I think she found her strength through Allah, actually. But uh, she found her strength through other believers too in Islam and how how they were um, committed to, in their faith to God, to Allah. And mm -hmm. uh, she was moved so, especially from an experience with her hairdresser. Um, her, her hairdresser refused to admit anyone else being God other than Allah. Uh, and so when she made that statement, you know, that Allah is God, the only God, her God, and not uh, Pharaoh, and they ordered her, you know, to come to the palace or whatever, and she was ordered to be tortured, and her children too. And uh, they built this pit and threw her and her children into the pit. And then I think uh, when Asiya, you know, learned about this, it just, you know, I may not amazed her, but modified her all at the same time and, and increased, and I think increased her faith and strength, either so much so that she, she went to her husband if they were able to tell him how she felt, her belief, how strong her faith was. And, and, so, he, and so he ordered for her to be punished in, in a horrible way. But nevertheless, she stayed fast. She stayed fast to her belief in Allah, you know, even with, uh, him tying her to a mountain or something and where if she never did uh, recant what she said for them to throw um, I guess a stone on her a huge stone but in her face she, she prayed to Allah and I guess he came to her and showed her is the hereafter the jinnah if it, or if he would take her soul uh, and and he did within that moment he took his, her soul and uh, I think Pharaoh still dropped the stone onto her uh, lifeless body at, at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to, to, uh, how she gained her strength and courage, I think through the faith of uh, Allah and, you know, and her commitment to him. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, what I like about that question is... Um, and if anyone else has any other thoughts, I want to add those in there as well. I want you to speak about those as well. But what I like about that question is about how she found her strength. I believe she found her strength from other people. She found her strength from, from the hairdresser. She found her strength from Musa. She found her strength from Musa's mother. And how we, as people of faith, you know, you just never know, kind of like Dr. Aisha said, you never know who you're touching. You never know what nugget of, 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 of inspiration, what nugget of, you know, of, of how God works through you, you know, in other people's mm -hmm. lives, how you speak mm -hmm. life, how you speak, you know, um, God allows you to be a vessel in other people's lives. And so I'm just thinking about, you know, how other people um, were strength for her, you know, and when she saw, you know, Musa um, address the, the magicians in, in Pharaoh's courtyard, but also the strength of a mother sending her child down down the river that, you know, I imagine that that may have had some impact on her in addition to, of course, the, the hairdresser. And, and um, but if, does anyone else have any additional comments? Um, I'd just like to add, uh, which is, you know, not, not, not so profound, but just that, you know, her strength was really lied in uh, her complete surrender to Allah. Mm -hmm. just her complete whole su surrender to the oneness of Allah mm -hmm. and um and 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 that's where it was I mean she she found incredible strength there I love that and I agree with that and that's why you know when I, I placed those three areas and I put you know release you know, with the torture piece, because, you know, we can be people of faith. We can profess faith all day long. We're, you know, born and raised in different faith traditions and we're this, that, the other, but, you know, until we come to know Allah for ourselves, until we surrender for ourselves. And sometimes people never get there. If they get there, you know, well into their adult years, you don't automatically, most people don't automatically surrender. 
That's right. Imam Frederick, Dr. Aldean, were you going to say something? Oh, I just, I, I just think this is excellent interpretation because we, we uh, read through the story, often not stopping to think about the model that's provided for us in it. And everybody has spoken just ha -ha, so well. Thank you, Dr. Aldean. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go to the, the last of the questions that you engaged on. What did she sacrifice? Oh, all that wealth. <laughs> <laughs> the wealth, the, 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 the power that the wife of the Pharaoh has, you know, uh, the life of luxury. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't well, the world. Work. Um, Sister Aisha made, made a point in our group yes. where, where uh, she had stated that, uh, well, what she sacrificed. Well, she sacrificed in, in some the worldly goods, but what she, uh, she maybe she sacrificed now uh, with her belief and faith in, in Allah and what that brought to her was yeah. so much more than what she so-called sacrificed at the worldly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at it at two, it's two, um, like two sides of a coin, right? So it, it depending on who you ask and how you ask it, uh, she might say she didn't sacrifice. You know, some might say she didn't sacrifice anything because the, the right. only the only true uh, the only truth and only the, the the only thing that really mattered was uh, her her faith in in, in Allah um, and, and showing that. So. Uh, that was that was the ultimate, right? And then the other side mm -hmm. is you sacrifice everything: your children, your wealth, your everything. But is that you know? But she didn't see that as everything. She saw Allah and her faith uh, as everything. So it just mm -hmm. depends on I think how you look at it and, and who you ask. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have I have just a little comment, and that is, um, though she sacrificed her life. She did not sacrifice her soul. Mm, nice. No. She didn't. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Yeah, she saved her soul. It also remind, it, it reminded me of uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, and, you know, they thought they, they thought they, burnt, you know, he was, he, they killed him on the a cross, but they did not. Right. And so, you know, um, the the kind of the, the thought that this is how you've gone out, but a lot what a lot does to, for his believers and for his pride, like it's like, oh, I got mm -hmm. you. They they think mm -hmm. they got this, but the reality is they're not in control of anything. Even if I make them think they're in control of it, I got this right. And so, like that's again, you know, that faith. She's like a lie. Don't, don't let don't let it go down like this. You're like I got you, right? And so. Like that, that's a reminder of that story that every time you uh, you feel in despair in your own life, that a lie's got you, right? Just lean in on the one that has control over everything, no matter how bad things are, because they really don't have no control. Mm -hmm. right. God, I was going to say all day, every day, all day, every day. I've got it. And, and, all and, day, and, every and day. any day. And any day. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I like the alhamdulillah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, my believers. I, like I, like, I, like, I just got came in late, uh, unfortunately, but I like the story. I mean, it really was an impacting story to be told. And you said it so well, and then the comments afterwards, they just, they laid, for what I can hear, laid right on point to what it was about. You know, I mean, alhamdulillah, you know, the, the, the oneness of Almighty God and the, uh, what, to, what you to do in the face of all the difficulties that we face in this life and so forth and so on. So it made a lot of sense for them to do what they did, you know, being in the position that they was in. And uh, I mean, I think it's a really a good idea for, for the way you presented this to uh, uh, for the rooms. This is the first time I came into it. I guess it's just so much to learn with this Zoom stuff. But, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. I was like, we got rooms you can go to and separate. Oh, wow, check that out. I'm like, we have to spread that around, see what that's about. That sounds like a very good idea.
to uh, be able to do that and then come to a little conference and you know, get your little council, your mushroom together and come back and then, you know, go with what you know and see where you're at. That's that's a, that's very good. I'm just wanted to say the little comment I got. I really love the story and the way it was presented. You know, it made it really woke up something in me. So I'm like, man, listen to this. This is really beautiful. So a lot of times I thought I knew best. You know, he brought me in at the time I need to be in, and he got me in there what I needed to hear. Alhamdulillah, yeah, he robbed you out of me. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. I I just like to uh, echo. Um, Brother Ishmael's comments that uh, this story really awakened me um, because I really didn't know very much about ASEA. I mean, I knew, but not a lot, right? And so uh, your, your questions, Dr. Harriet, really uh, were intriguing and uh, stimulating, right? And so um, that really motivates me to study more. <laughs> Thank you. I have one more question. And there it is. It's really a culminating question. Can you relate to any aspect of Asiya's story within the framework of her role, her relationships, or her release? As we talked about her release, her surrender within your own lives. This is the application part. She's an example, but how do we apply to what, you know, how can we relate to her role, you know, when she, her role as the wife of Pharaoh, her role as the, um, <coughs> adoptive mother of, of Musa, her role as a woman of, of faith, her role of, of courage, um, her, how she navigated relationships. Can we relate to that? Can we relate to that surrender or that when we give God everything, take me, you know, can, how can we relate to that? Or how we've spoken life into other people and when we allowed ourselves to be a vessel, can we relate to that? Excellent question. I think that um, for, uh, and, and I just really encourage everybody to really jump in here because we only have, uh, you know, six or seven more minutes, but um, I, I, I'm interested to hear folks' comments. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. For sure. So, I, I think uh, that story and, and this being uh, uh, the knowledge of women's uh, history month, and the fact that uh, this mother, uh, too, uh, with a relationship uh, to, 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 to the woman that uh, uh, said she believed in Allah, uh, didn't believe in Pharaoh, and he wanted to uh, kill their children. I think that they, when we look at these, uh, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to call them stories, but reports, in scripture that we have to relate them to our times. And I see it relating to the times of our children today and many mothers today, uh, their children are being uh, uh, sacrificed. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if, if we look, I may not be, be able to develop this idea completely, but I do have a feeling that the situations that we see <laughs> Uh, with, with children today uh, being killed and almost sacrificed. And this is this society that it has a, a bearing uh, to upon, upon this uh, report. And I'd like to say one other thing to you, Sister Harriet. Uh, I appreciate uh, uh, what you bring to us and your background. Uh, you being coming out of, and we all came out of, 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 of uh, most of us out of the Christian church, but you came out of the Christian church with, with a knowledge and a background. I was in the Christian church. See, I was just there and uh, not very knowledgeable. And uh, I was listening to a program uh, uh, in commemoration of Sister Deborah, who also came out with a strong Christian background. And Allah says that we would see Jesus and Christ together. And so I think uh, your example, Deborah, and your examples are also uh, an, an acknowledgement of that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I, don't, I can't really respond to that, but I appreciate that. And again, everything that I say, everything that I do, everything that I am is all by the will of God. And um, I am just a vessel, but I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I love your example. Um, about Brother Bashir as far as the sacrifice of our children 
um, and this violence that we're experiencing and how, I mean, that's another Talim in itself as far as that role of protecting our children, sending our children down the River Nile. And what does that look like? How can we protect our children? Um, how can we protect, and that's the other thing I didn't bring up a lot through this the story, when I was originally talking about this story or going to talk about the story is about the role that Asiya, may Allah be pleased with her, had in nurturing, had, had in taking care of this child who was persecuted. That was actually where I was going to go with it at first. And so that's another alim in itself, as, with, as far as all of us have a role and responsibility in protecting persecuted children. All of us are Asiyas in that way, male and female. All of us are as a community, as an ummah. So, you know, now that we're at the last, you know, few minutes, we can still talk about that. But then, you know, I just had, you know, again, this is the very last slide. Closing reflections. We're already in that space. We have four minutes. Um, I know that Dr. Adeen, uh, I'm not sure, Dr. Adeen, you wanted to send a link um, also on um, um, regarding uh, Dr. Uh, Deborah Majid uh, Memorial for her. I sent, I sent it to your email. Okay. I'm going to see if I can drop it in the link. Before we head off, so I'm going to go off of a share right now and we can continue to talk. So I can yeah. drop that. Yeah. Let me, see. Let me see if I can see this. You know, very, very Did interesting discussion um, in terms of reflections. I think that uh, for women in general, um, I think that many of us can identify on many levels with regard to role, relationships, and release in our own respective families, right? Some of us, as Brother Bashir thought, talked about, you know, we come out of a, a Christian tradition and some of our family members have not quite accepted that, right? Uh, some of us um, have had to navigate multiple roles within our family uh, while we continue to uh, own and embrace our Muslimhood. Um, while we, you know, while we are working with our family members, and um, release, of course, is often daily <laughs> as we as we try to, uh, you know, retain who we are, um, remain committed, um, but at the same time, uh, not allowing, uh, you know, navigating and not allowing the world to consume us. Any other reflections? Dr. Aisha, do I see your, your face? No, I was, I was, uh, the link for um, our, our beloved sister, uh, Deborah's uh, memorial. I, I love to get that as well. Make sure we include it in our, um, in our newsletter, inshallah. Oh, all right. Uh, just a couple of closing comments from folks. Uh, this is from Anne. Um, she did. She wrote uh, that um, uh, Asiya helped Musa unbeknowingly as a baby, who later became a lost servant. Peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, she sacrificed her life and her faith for her faith and her belief in Allah. And uh, lastly, she has a comment for you, Dr. Harriet. Um, and thanks you for this presentation. And um, so, and she thanks me too. Thank you. <laughs> You're so very welcome, man. Thank you. So, yes, I, I, uh, I just dropped, it's not a link. I dropped, if you can click in your chat, I dropped a flyer for the memorial. It didn't and show up in the In the, da it's in, do you not see it in the chat right now? No. It says me to everyone. I no, don't. I don't see it's an image. It says an image. There's no image that you can click on. No, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Okay. All righty. I it, okay. I see how oh my. All oh, right. Um, we'll send it out. You got the image. It came through at one fifty nine. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, Doctor, any closing thoughts? M myself. Yes. Oh, no. Um, again, I'm humbled and honored to be here in this space. Um, and I was, um, you know, this this dialogue that we have, it's, it's even though we talk about the presenter, the speaker, it's, it's 
as enriching and as fulfilling and as much um, I learn and, and, and the, I learn and, and the interaction itself is worship for me. So this, I gain as much as through this interaction as everyone else on this call. And I appreciate and I'm honored um, that you were able to share, that everyone shared um, their reflections and their insight um, in, into their relationship and understanding of Allah. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, we have two closing comments uh, in the chat uh, from Sister Zakia Sadiq and Dr. Adi uh, Both of them really thank you, Dr. Lewis. Um, uh, excellent and knowledgeable presentation. And I echo those sentiments. And uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, being a part, for joining us for our, our the conclusion of our Women's History Month. Uh, Talim presentations. Thank you all, and uh, please don't forget to uh, join in um, next Sunday. I don't know if Imam Tariq is on, if there's anything that you'd like to add um, as we are uh, fastly approaching the start of Ramadan. So, hey. <laughs> yes, hey. yes, yes. So, thank you all. Uh, that's our that concludes our program tip for today. Assalamu alaikum. Well, like my salam. Well, like my salam. Thank you. Well, like my salam. Thank you very much. Well, like